When you hear the word bee, what comes to mind? The first thing that probably comes to mind is bug. Flower-loving bug. Or maybe what came to your mind was, for those who are allergic to their stains, you may have thought of your worst nightmare, your biggest fear, the thing that keeps you awake at night. Nah, that's ridiculous. Although bees are not skaters, nor are they basketball players, did you know that bees are actually mathematicians? That's right, bees are actually much more mathematical than we think them to be. Bees are actually pretty talented in using this tool called optimization. Not to be confused with Optimus Prime, optimization is a tool used in calculus which helps to find maximums and minimums. Basically, bees didn't just choose the hexagon shape because they like are absolutely obsessed with six-sided polygons. In fact, they chose the hexagon because they are the optimal shape for storing their honey. The wax which makes the honeycomb structure combined with the stored honey makes the entire honeycomb and honey making process a costly one. The bee's goal is to make this costly process as efficient as possible. Minimal waste of time, minimal waste of effort. This is called optimization. Let me show you an example of how optimization works. Let's say you bought 100 feet worth of wooden fencing and you want to create some sort of enclosure on the side of your house. You decide you want to place your fence in a way which uses the side of your house as one of the sides, so you end up saving some fencing, some money you don't want to spend, you know? Let's start off by drawing a diagram of what we're working with. We can label the width as X and the two lengths as Y. Since we know that we have 100 feet worth of fence, we can actually create an equation which we can use to find what the value of either x or y is. We need to make this equation useful for us, so we need to isolate either one of the variables, x or y. This means we need to get one of the variables in this equation by itself on one side. Now, we can substitute this expression in place of x in another equation which is actually our main focus, the area. Area is equal to length times width, so we can write this as a equals x times y. After plugging in x, we find our new expression to be a equals 100y minus 2y squared. Now comes for the scary part. Well, I mean, to me it's kind of scary, but it's probably not to you, but it's just really mathy, I guess. Anyways, we need to take the derivative of this equation. When you take the derivative of an equation, you're basically kind of undoing each constant, but this comes with some rules. We want to subtract this power by 1, as well as multiply it by the constant sitting in front. So 4 times 3 is 12, and 3 minus 1 is 2, so this turns into 12x squared. In a case where the variable is not being raised to any power greater than 1, then that variable will go away. In this case, we will see y equals 2 plus 3 times 3 is 9 x to the second power. Now, we can return back to our original area equation we made earlier. Our area was found to be 100y minus 2y squared. We need to derive this. Once we derive this, we get 100 minus 4y to the first power, which is really just like 4y. If you want, you can plug this into a graphing calculator so you can see what value y is. Or you can set this equation equal to zero and then find the y value from there. From here, we find our y value, which is our length of the fence, to be 25. Now if we go back and plug this into our original equation, our x equals 100 minus 2y, then we will be able to find the value of x.
through this, we find our dimensions to be 50 by 25. If we multiply these dimensions together, we find the area to be 1,250 square feet. Optimization is essentially the reason why bees have settled for the hexagon shape for their hives. Not only is the wax strongest in this formation, it also holds the most honey compared to other polygons. Another interesting fact about bees is that they actually have shown to understand the abstract concept of zero. At RMIT University, aka the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology, located in Australia, researcher Scarlett Howards discovered a way to test bees' cognitive ability. In her experiments, Howards presented a team of bees with a set of cards. Each card represented a different quantity, using symbols like circles, squares, triangles. If the bees chose the card with the lowest quantity displayed, they were given the award of sugar water. After the bees were trained to choose the smallest quantity, round after round, Howard's decided to introduce a blank card. Surprisingly, the bees began to choose the blank card. This demonstrates how bees understand a concept which even babies struggle to understand. Babies are taught to count their ones, twos, threes, but they're not quick to understand that zero is a quantity as well, even though you can't really count it. What makes this so interesting is the difference between the size of the brain of the bee versus the human. In the bee's brain, there's about 1 million neurons, whereas in the human brain, there's about 100 billion. Such a case goes to show that bees are much more than just pollen jocks. They deal with math just as much as they deal with honey, flowers, and wax on a day-to-day -day basis. Bees would not be B students, but A plus students. Just kidding, they probably won't. I don't even know if they understand what school is, but yeah. Bien.